International Trade Focus is brought to you by Ghana Free Zones Authority and supported by Goyle and Agricultural Development Bank. Coming up on International Trade Focus. This week's episode will feature an interview with the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Nana Apiedi Dankawoso I, on how to ensure continuity of business in Ghana in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. And later, the government of Ghana has made available a 600 million cities soft loan scheme for SMEs. As the world battles COVID-19 disease in order to save human lives, industries or businesses that are not considered essential continue to struggle for survival. Now, millions of people have lost their jobs as employers are left with no option than to lay off. In the face of these uncertainties, one question occupies our minds. How can businesses find a way out of this difficult situation? To help us find answers to this question and many other questions is the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce, Nana Dr. Apiaje Dankawoso I. You're watching International Trade Figures. We can't proceed without saying special thanks to the sponsors of this program. International Trade Figures is brought to you by Ghana Free Zones Authority. They say sharing good fortunes and call good energy, ADB, truly agric and more. International Trade Focus is also brought to you by Pediasi Valley Resort. My name is Anna Spiel. We'll be back after this break. Stay tuned. Your business concepts and investment must be harnessed through a hassle-free and highly thoughtful process to make them globally competitive. That is precisely the mission of the Ghana Free Zones Authority. Ghana Free Zones Authority packages Ghana's enabling business and investment environment with endless benefits. Total exemption from major taxes and levies for first 10 years. Talk to us now about our business oasis created all over the country. Acres of industrial enclaves for all sectors. Our beneficiaries are in vibrant business exporting finished and processed factory inputs all over the world. And what do our clients call us? Partner. 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 Ghana Free Zones Authority. Sharing good fortunes. Breathtaking picturesque views. The essence of tranquility recrafted. What you desire. A romantic expedition, syndicate sessions, banquet and conferences, or a desperate weekend getaway. Just name it. It's exclusively packaged for you at Pediasi Valley Resort. A brief, spacious rooms, ultra modern gym facilities, games, indoors, terrace, and lawn restaurants, and lounges, cozy private dining, and all the swimmers' paradise. Aquaba, any day, all year round, to Pediasi Valley Resort. The acts of serenity, skillfully served. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Are you an importer or exporter? Do you need quick financing at the best rate on the market? ADB has good news for you. Walk into any agricultural development bank location nationwide for that solution to all your trade financing needs. ADB offers you pre-financing of exports and imports, post-shipment credit facilities, bank guarantees, the issuance and acceptance of letters of credit, documentary bills for collection, outward documentary collection. Enjoy free advisory services from our well-trained, dedicated trade officers. Exporters of agricultural products are encouraged to take advantage of this great service. For further inquiries, call us on 0302-210-210. ADB, making trade finance easy. ADB, 
truly a Greek and more. Up next is our Focal Point segment. COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus disease that just over a few weeks ago was seen as a Chinese crisis, has moved from just an issue for China to a global pandemic, with over 200 countries affected. World leaders have shifted their focus to the containment of the disease, leaving the management of financial and economic sectors struggling for their own survival. And the effect has been detrimental. Perhaps what has made the outbreak of the coronavirus so devastating on economic activities in the world is the fact that it has drastically reduced the free movement of people, goods and services that are important ingredients for business sustainability. The coronavirus has had an adverse effect on various sectors of the world's economy, pharmaceuticals, air, sea and ground transportation, oil and gas, automotive, manufacturing, international trade, hospitality industries have been hit hard by economic disruption from the outbreak. According to a report from the UN's International Civil Aviation Organization, global airline revenues are expected to fall by 4 to $5 billion in the first quarter of 2020 due to flight cancellations. According to the International Energy Agency, IEA, global oil demand has been hit hard by the coronavirus and the widespread shutdown of China's economy. Demand is now expected to fall by 435,000 barrels year on year in the first quarter of 2020, the first quarterly contraction in more than 10 years. In Ghana, Economists say if the coronavirus is not contained quickly, prices of goods can increase as there will be great demand but very little supply, a situation they say can create a ripple effect on the country's economy. Hospitality, travel and tours are among industries that have been worst hit by the impact of COVID-19. Several importers, retailers, manufacturers in Ghana say interest on their loans are accruing and the future seems bleak for their businesses. In order to contain the coronavirus disease and reduce its spread, the president of Ghana, Nanada Danko Akufado, has ordered restrictions on the movement of persons within the Greater Accra region, the Ashanti region and Kaswa in the central region, effective March 30, 2020. I've imposed, pursuant to the powers granted the president of the republic under the Imposition of Res Restrictions Act, 2020 Act 1012. Restrictions on movement of persons in the Greater Accra metropolitan area, Gama, which includes Awutu Senya East Municipality, and the Greater Kumasi metropolitan area and contiguous districts for a period of two weeks, subject to review. It will give us the opportunity to try to halt the spread of the virus and scale up effectively contact tracing of persons who have come into contact with infected persons, test them for the virus, and if necessary, quarantine and isolate them for treatment should they prove to have the virus. Movement of goods and some essential services within the two commercial cities are allowed. In any event, only persons involved in the food value chain can operate in the markets during this period. Individuals and institutions providing the following services shall be exempted from the restrictions. Members of the executive, legislature, and the judiciary. Production, distribution, and marketing of food, beverages, pharmaceuticals, medicine, paper, and plastic packages. Environmental and sanitation activities staff of Valku, road and railway construction workers, mining workers, fisher folk, members of the security agencies assigned lawful duties, staff of electricity, water, telecommunications, e-commerce and digital service providers, and staff of fuel stations. As additional measures, the President directed the Finance Minister, Honorable Ken Furiata, to prepare a coronavirus elevation program to address the disruption in economic activities. The program is subject to parliamentary approval. 
as a responsive government, will continue to implement bold measures to mitigate the impact of the coronavirus on businesses and households and ensure the job losses are minimized. The Minister for Finance has been directed by me to prepare for approval by Parliament a coronavirus alleviation program to address the disruption in economic activities, the hardship of our people, and to rescue and revitalize our industries. You will then immediately make available a minimum of 1 billion CDs to households and businesses, particularly small and medium scale enterprises. The commercial banks are, in addition, responding to the Bank of Ghana's 1.5% decrease in the policy rate and 2% in reserve requirement with a 3 billion CD facility to support industry, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, service and manufacturing sectors. We're providing additional relief, such as extension of the tax filing date from April to June, a 2% reduction of interest rates by banks, effective 1st April 2020, the granting by the banks of a six-month moratorium of principal repayments to entities in the airline and hospitality industry i.e. hotels, restaurants, car rentals, food vendors, taxis, and Uber operators. All other sector credit exposures will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Nana Dr. Apiyeje Danka, also the first, is the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He is our guest on our in -depth segment today. Nana Dr. Apiede Dankawoso the first is our guest for today. He is the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We want to find out from him in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, how can we ensure that business continues even during these hard times? Nana, thank you very much for having us in your home. Thank you, my dear. Right. So um, we know for a fact that this COVID-19 has affected businesses globally. Um, per the information that your organization has, to what extent has this COVID-19 affected businesses globally and businesses in the country? Um, in the first place, I want, uh, I want to thank you for uh, being my, um, my host for today. And I want to say that um, we thank the Lord for bringing us this far. We also thank um, the government and the people of Ghana uh, for us all to be alive. And I want to just advise that we must all be, must be at our various homes. We must stay home and stay alive. What I want to say is that this uh, pandemic it's a plague. It's something that nobody uh, expected in life. So in actual fact, it's something that nobody has made provision for. And that's why I want to urge all of us to adhere to whatever instructions and pieces of advice and counseling that has been given by professionals and those in government and what have you or for us all to be alive. That is more important. If we say we should be at home, we must be at home because we want to limit their spread. But dear, I want to say that uh, all over the world, everybody is crying. And um, We don't know when this pandemic will also go away, but it is our prayer that our Lord will hear our cry and make sure that uh, this pandemic goes away forever. And I want to also say that even though we are at our various homes and houses, aftermath is going to be something very um, unpleasant and we must prepare ourselves for that as a nation 
as um, as a continent and uh, uh, globally that is that is it so from the micro to the micro and so I want to say that the outbreak of the novel coronavirus disease that is the COVID-19 has disrupted every aspect of human life economic physical and mental well-being the risk to global economy is severe Around the world, national economies have been faced with disruptions in economic activities, and Ghana is no exception. The manufacturing, tourism, and hospitality, and transport are among the hardest hit. This has resulted in shutdown of some factories, layoffs, short-time working, redundancy, and disruptions in global value chain. To curtail the spread of this deadly virus requires drastic, decisive, and proactive measures. At this defining moment, health measures remain the first priority for governments, businesses, and society. Showing solidarity and working together to protect staff, customers, and local communities is key in curbing the spread. The Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, GNCCI, therefore fully supports the partial lockdown of the epicenters of the disease in Ghana. Uncomfortable as this lockdown may be, the Chamber urges its members in the affected areas to adhere strictly to government directives. The COVID-19 pandemic and its associated impacts, including lockdowns, have had dire consequences on businesses, more especially small, medium enterprises, SMEs in Ghana. The contribution of SMEs to Ghana's socioeconomic development cannot be overemphasized. Therefore, in the adverse effects that threatens the continued viability of SMEs will have a far-reaching and irreversible damage to the Ghanaian economy. To salvage this situation and ensure that the Ghanaian economy is back to track in the not-too-distant future, government, in consultation with key stakeholders, have announced certain key measures to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on businesses. The prominent among the measures are a reduction in the monetary policy rate from 16% to 14.5% and a 2% reduction in it of interest rates on the Ghana reference rate GRR. A syndication of facility of 3 billion Ghana cities to support industry, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, service and manufacturing sectors. Six-month moratorium of principal loan repayments for selected businesses. Also, extension of the deadline for the filing of taxes from four months to six months after the end of the basis year. And last but not least, possible reduction in the cost of data and telecommunication to households and businesses, etc. As the representative organ of the business community in Ghana, the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, GNCCI, fully supports these measures and commends government on the initiatives undertaken thus far. The stakeholder consultation remains crucial to our collective efforts in fighting the pandemic and its adverse impacts. The GNCCI urges government and the Bank of Ghana to continue to work with stakeholders to ensure that the announced measures achieve its intended purpose. More work needs to be done in some specific areas, including the following. The Bank of Ghana must work with the commercial banks to ensure that the reduction in policy rates actually translates into reduction in the lending rates paid by businesses. We all know the tenuous relationship between policy rates and lending rates. This is the time with the policy rate to be effective in affecting lending 
rates. The stimulus package should be linked to industrial value chain for operational resilience. It must be used to strengthen the backward and forward linkages necessary for industrial growth and also to address the interconnectedness risks within industry. Government must also adopt holistic approach in, de in designing the disbursing the stimulus package. Government must swiftly provide clarity on the intended class beneficiaries of the stimulus package, the qualifying criteria and arrangements for providing the supports. The Chamber is ready to work with government to ensure a fair and transparent disbursement of the fund to deserving beneficiaries. There is the need for further short to medium term strategy that develops physical monetary tax policy and that is tax incentives and trade policy to keep business running, prevent layoffs and protect vulnerable workers. In the medium term, a coherent plan that supports the hardest hit industries that is manufacturing, tourism, hospitality and transportation, build resilience of the domestic value chain and prepares the country for the next unknown pandemic or economic shock must be developed. Now is the time to encourage domestic production given the global disruption of international trade resulting from COVID-19. We must continuously find innovative ways of supporting our domestic firms. The GICCI will continue to work with government and other stakeholders in promoting and protecting commercial and industrial value chains in the country. Let us all support government's initiatives to contain the spread of COVID-19 by adhering to the preventive measures. The Chamber urges its members to make voluntary contributions to the COVID-19 fund. So that was a document that um, the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry has prepared in the wake of this yes. um, COVID-19, yeah. outlining stimulus package that government together with stakeholders has for the business community Definitely. and households. And then also some recommendations as to how this stimulus package should be shared equally for the beneficiaries. Yeah, okay. right. In your capacity um, as the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, how do you think that um, the COVID-19 disease has affected the global economy and then how has it affected our economy as well? Before uh, you came in, I was on phone with uh, some other countries within Africa. You know, I'm the immediate past president of the Pan-African Chambers of Commerce and Industry headquartered in Addis Ababa. Uh, that is about 55 countries and um, since this pandemic we have been we have platforms and uh, we have been talking to um, other presidents of various chambers of commerce other countries to see uh, how it's affecting the, the various economies and what have you and just as we you indicated this um, pandemic is not only affecting ghana first of all it's affecting ghana affecting the 16 countries in ECOWAS countries, that is the ECOWAS Commission. It is also affecting the uh, African continent as a whole, and it's affecting Europe, it's affecting Asia, and almost the whole world. And so it is uh, something that is uh, it's around everybody's neck, and um, it's about, all about businesses, it's about production. It's about manufacturing. It's about import and export. It's about services. So in natural sense, it's affecting all facets of businesses in our economy. And so right now, the most essential things that we need is what we need to concentrate on because we must make sure that we protect lives first and then all other things can be looked at. So right now, we know that um, those at uh, various uh, essential commodities are now uh, produce, some of them are producing, especially in Ghana, we are, have partial um, lockdown. 
And uh, even before the government was able to take that decision, we had several meetings with the president at the presidency, that is the Jubilee House, and it was not easy because Ghanaian uh, society is very complex. The Ghanaian economy is complex. And so there are about 88% of the people of Ghana are in the informal sector. Only about 12% are in the, no, um, the formal sector. The government employs only 6% of the workforce of Ghana. And the private sector employs about 94%. You know, the economy itself for the whole of this country, 60% of the people are into agriculture at the various um, chain within the value chain of, of the economy. And so it makes it quite complex. You know, those who are also in trade, the small, medium enterprises, is so huge and it's not properly, you know, um, formulated. And, and therefore, um, it becomes very, very complex to deal with such situations. But notwithstanding, um, we, we, we have been able to overcome the spread of the disease. And right now, you bear with me that um, um, everybody is adhering to the, um, the call that the president made and the various, especially my good self, have made a statement to all the uh, private sector in this country as a leader and also um, trying to make sure that those in the affected areas, those in Tema, um, we have a branch in Tema, we have a branch in Accra, we have the headquarters, Kumasi and, 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 you know, um, and part of Central Region, that is uh, Kaswa. So going forward, what we are trying to say is that this is a dreadful disease. This is uh, very uh, bad times for us as a, as a people, but we must all accept because it's a calamity. And how do we deal with it? We must all come together to see how best we bring our ideas and uh, make sure that we bring the, when we are alive, we'll be able to uh, bring the economy back to stable. Mm -hmm. Do you see that um, there, are, there are businesses classified under uh, essential and non-essential? Do you see that um, this pandemic perhaps will offer some businesses some opportunities? Do you, do you see that? Um, that is very true. Mm. Um, because, for example, that of uh, pharmaceuticals is no number one. Food side is number two. And um, other uh, services like transport, part of transport, and all those kind of things. So that is, uh, that is true. Mm. Because for now, all other sectors of the economy have been shut down, with the exception of food, uh, pharmaceuticals, that is uh, uh, health, and just a small areas that you know, can augment mm. the uh, operations mm. of these areas. And so that is a fact. But we must all admit that, apart from God, the next thing that we, everybody has to look at is your health. If you, have, if you are alive and you are healthy, then you can think of any other thing. And so I agree with you that most, some areas are more important than others. Mm -hmm. But we must also accept that we must also support the um, Without food, for a certain number of days, you cannot live. <laughs> and if you are not well, you need some medication to bring back to normalcy. And so therefore, we cannot be alive for uh, just a day without water. Yeah. You know, so water, food, and some other um, beverages are very, very essential uh, to our life. And so I agree with you that we need to look at those areas first and then we can add, for example, the cloth I'm wearing. Um, why should I go and buy another cloth for now? Where am I going? Now we are all have to stay home. So at the end of the day, um, what do you need another cloth for? Mm. But since morning, 
I've taken my breakfast. You know, if anything at all, I've taken some um, vitamin C to boost my system. You know, so what is it? So the cloth and the food and the medicine, which one is more important? It's clear. You know, so we must support those from that area at this critical time to make sure that we um, have more people alive and then out of that we'll be able to do all other things to bring uh, the economy to normalcy. Those who are not classified under the essential um, category, your members, I believe you've had several interactions with them. So in communicating with them, what are some of the difficulties that they are facing? Yeah, thank you. I just mentioned that the economy is more of informal sector. So most of the people or the businesses, we have three different classes of uh, uh, businesses. We have, um, we have small enterprises, we have companies, we have uh, partnerships and, um, and, and others. Each of these sectors feed each other. And so, in terms of importance, they are all relatively important. Just as we indicated that life must be protected first and others. So it is with all other sectors, they all also want to uh, survive. They all pay their taxes to government, especially on PEYE. They also pay their corporate taxes at the end of the year to, when they declare their profits and all, what have you. So, um, if businesses are not doing well, it also affects government in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the nutshell. So some of these um, uh, businesses are not, did not, as I said in the, in the, in the earlier um, remarks, that um, nobody expected this kind mm -hmm. of uh, situation, so, uh, especially at the first quarter of the year. So it has brought uh, about hardships on uh, businesses and uh, if we, are, we don't take care and government doesn't bring in this sort of stimulus to support these businesses, it will be very difficult to sustain um, the, um, the workers at the various uh, companies. Um, most companies also rely on um, advanced um, finances and that they have taken loans from uh, various institutions and they are uh, um, paying it back. Others have leased and they are also paying back. And so they, when they did not expect this kind of situation, it brings about um, unfortunate hardship and um, disorganize the whole um, institution. As a whole. You're watching International Trade Focus. This is our in depth segment, and we're having a conversation with the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Nana Dr. Apieje Dankawusu the first. We'll be back shortly. Your business concepts and investment must be harnessed through a hustle free and highly thoughtful process to make them globally competitive. That is precisely the mission of the Ghana Free Zones Authority. Ghana Free Zones Authority packages Ghana's enabling business and investment environment with endless benefits. Total exemption from major taxes and levies for first 10 years. Talk to us now about our business oasis created all over the country. Acres of industrial enclaves for all sectors. Our beneficiaries are in vibrant business exporting finished and processed factory inputs all over the world. And what do our clients call us? Partner. 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 Ghana Free Zones Authority. Sharing good fortunes. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Gold Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. 
The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goal Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goil. Good energy. A warm welcome back. You're still watching International Trade Focus, and this is our in depth segment. With us today is the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Nana Dr. Apieje Dankawo. So, we are looking at how we can ensure continuity of businesses even in the wake of the COVID 19 pandemic. One thing that has been spelled out clear during these times is our over dependence on imports as a country. Now, a few weeks ago, the president of Ghana stated or indicated that the time to look within is now. Do you agree with this? He, he said it's time to um, equip local manufacturers and reduce the over-dependence on imports. Do you agree with this? I more than 100% agree with the president. And if you um, heard me well, I indicated in, in my uh, earlier statement. In fact, it has been a clarion call for all of us, we, are, we import more than we export. And that's why, as a person, if you Google with my, with my name, you see a lot of clarion call that uh, requests and appeals that have made um, on the Bank of Ghana and that of the commercial banks to reduce um, interest rates for lots of people to go into production and also to make sure whenever you increase production and uh, people also come out with businesses, they employ more people to reduce unemployment rates in the country. So I agree with the president um, in Toto on this matter because I'm a board member of, on, um, board member of uh, Ghana Eisen Bank and we selected some thematic areas to support the economy. And some of these areas uh, manufacturing and that manufacturing we supported as I speak we have supported the um, uh, pharmaceuticals of about 181 million Ghana cities you know aside that the poultry in the uh, poultry we have also supported them quite substantially we have also supported with the cassava you know this uh, sanitizers that we are doing it comes we can get it from cassava and so and then that of um, some of these fruits, juices that we import, we have supported so many other companies, but they are at different stages of uh, completion. My plea would be that the Ministry of Finance will support and make sure that the Ghana Eastern Bank gets enough funds to um, be given to some of these people um, who have entrepreneurs who have started at their various uh, stages of completion of their, their factories, which is some of them under the 1D, 1F. When we are able to do that and we export to some of these countries um, around West Africa and around the globe, we'll be able to get more uh, inflows in terms of the um, uh, uh, what do you call dollar. Mm. And that dollar fight, that fight between the dollar and the city mm -hmm. will stop. You know, where one dollar can, is going for about five point something, you know, Ghana cities, it's, it's uncalled for. You know, most the cases around January, February, March, that is where it goes up because we take a lot of um, um, dollars to China to import a lot of things into the country. You know, so I agree with the government. I agree. And we have started already. And so the, we must also uh, speed up to make sure that we support the infant industries. In fact, if the interest rate comes down and it becomes very, very competitive for um, producers, it will be because one other issue is that um, somebody producing the same product from Nigeria or any other country will take advantage because of the interest rate. And now that Ghana is hosting the Continental Free Trade Secretariat, it's now become competitive as, and we see ourselves as one people. And if uh, Ghanaians or entrepreneurs in Ghana 
do not get that opportunity whereby stimulus packages and um, competitive interest rates on loans so that they can expand their production and more people also coming in so they can produce more, employ more people to make the economy viable. And talking about the continental free trade area brought my mind to this. Do you think um, the current business struggles that we are seeing will affect the continental free trade or will affect Ghana once trading under the continental free trade commences? The pandemic has derailed and has affected all other things that we are doing as, a, as an economy, mm. you know, for Ghana, for West Africa, and uh, for the whole um, co co continent as well. Mm. Now that um, we are locked down, no, um, we have also banned, um, you know, planes landing in Ghana. Uh, so there are restrictions all over. So now almost everything is uh, in partial uh, what do you call it, a stand, mm. you know, and we are hoping that um, things will change within the shortest possible time. Mm. Some people also believe that it's a blessing in disguise. They say this is the time that we can perhaps boost our local industries so that we can gain some export opportunities here and there. Talk about the cassava that can be used to produce alcohol, for instance. If Ghana is able to boost I mean, the cassava industry and those in the value chain, we can perhaps see some export opportunities in there. In us. actual fact, what you're saying is true. And we have seen it. Hmm. We have picked some consultants who have who are helping us. And then um, Guinness has also um, shown the way as a, um, an off taker mm. for this alcohol and other things from cassava. So we have supported quite a large number of people who are going into uh, cassava production and the varieties that you are going to use and all that. So we have gone far on that score. We are, we are also saying that uh, most Ghanaians must also go into agri, you know. And so, for example, I was talking about the, the uh, pharmaceuticals, how much we have supported them, even though um, we, they are, as I said, they are various um, stages of completion because the, the, the buildings are ready, but the machines, mm. you know, uh, the machines, are, some of them are in, others are still uh, on the seas coming. So that we're hoping that uh, by August, most of these companies might have been completed so that um, they will start production. We are also supporting the tomato um, industry, which is also big. Now we have about uh, five of them, you know, at different stages. Cashew at different stages. Um, what do you call it, um, mango and, and all that. Mm. So I agree with you. The export side, if you are able to boost that side and support it well, let's give ourselves two, three years. We will export more uh, things to other parts of the country and that will earn us more uh, foreign exchange to you know, lower that uh, uh, necessary uh, what do you call it, uh, fight between the dollar mm -hmm. and, and the, and the city. Mm -hmm. um, right now, as we speak, we're also talking about the poultry industry. Yes, there could be, people were also calling that we in a ban, we put a ban on the uh, poultry feed and all that. As we speak, my dear, we import about 95% um, just recently we import it was from 95%, now it has come to about 90% of the, the poultry, poultry uh, as food mm. in, this, in this country. So if you don't put measures that will boost production and you play the ban, you put the ban now, what are we going to do? Right. We have a, a serious deficiency on that side. And so what we are doing is that we have to support some of these poultry uh, poultry farmers so that they can you know improve on their production give your, ourselves for about three four five years then we can you know by setting margins we can reduce it and then finally in the long run you know we, we can put a ban on the 
uh, importation of uh, poultry mm -hmm. as a food. Then also on rice, which is another staple food for us. Now every home that we go, especially now that we are on partial you know, lockdown, every, every household take rice. But the, the production in Ghana is on the lower side. Mm -hmm. So we are also taking it um, and we are working on that to make sure that uh, we, ha we get more people, you know, uh, producing. Um, it's not about the, the numbers, but the, the quantities, mm -hmm. which is more important. Mm -hmm. Because America, we have only 4% of the population as farmers, mm -hmm. but they can feed the whole world, right. you know. So, so we are also trying to, yes, it's more that, important. Yeah. And technology. Mm -hmm. We are also taking um, um, research and development as a, another e area. And I was telling the president, you know, I'm a, a presidential advisor to the president. Mm -hmm. So I was advising him on that. But that's this is not a time. You know, mm -hmm. right now it's a critical, critical moment. Take critical decisions and, you know, make sure that we save lives and make sure that when everything goes down, stop the spread and everybody, you know, is healthy, then you can think about some of these things. Mm. Yes. Right. One question that I always, in Ghana, we believe that anything that is coming from outside is of good quality, yeah. better than what we have here. Mm -hmm. So in your capacity, do you think that we have the requisite skills, the, the producers or local manufacturers will be able to produce quality products so that we can cut importing or we can cut the importation of products? Yes, please, mm -hmm. because now, we don't have any choice. That is the only way to go. And before this time, personally, we, are, we have taken this issue up. And with the AGWA, you know, African Growth Opportunity Act, where we get about um, 6,500 product lines into the American market without quotas, without taxes. And I've been leading, leading this for the past five years. And seriously, for now, garments and apparels is leading. For food side, we have yam, we have uh, banana, we, and then we, we are also talking about cashew, uh, the other one which is from the north, what do you call it, uh, in Kutu? Shea, shea butter. Shea butter. Yes, shea, shea butter is another big area. You know, and now go to um, Amazon, mm. you know, we have a lot of Guardian products, you know, being, uh, you know, accepted at Amazon and you can think of quality. Mm. Just uh, beginning of um, December last year, that is uh, 2019, I took about um, 35 Ghanaians who are into those areas to America, and then we asked them to take us through. We are, want to ensure quality, you know. And if you are able to do that, then more European countries will pick our products. And for that matter, those who are Importing from Europe will not import from Europe again. We also we also uh, noticed that um, packaging was another area, and that one too we have brought in about two different times um, um, professionals to take Ghanaians uh, who are into production in, into 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 you know uh, into into that. And so um, we are on course. Only that the pace is very slow. Right. I can assure you. With this pandemic, it has become an eye opener for all mm. of us. And every day we learn and become wiser. Okay. So I have something I call WIMPY, W I M P E Y. We intend making progress every year. Mm. But this time, this time around, the pace must be very speedy so that um, we, we take uh, over our economy. Hitherto, we were depending or over depending on uh, imports which is not a good thing because uh, within this shortest possible time, if we are not able to uh, rely on the local manufacturers for these sanitizers and all that, we might have fi uh, found ourselves in a very awkward position. Mm -hmm. And so it is the wake up call, it is the time for us to reflect and see the need and how important that we grow and nurture the infant industries to produce more quality things so that we Ghanaians must also patronize most of the things that we produce in Ghana to make sure that 
we uh, lessen most of the things that we import from other countries so that we can get the best of our life. Any time you import from another country, you create jobs for the mm. people from that country. And that's why we want to say that let everybody, you know, patronize made in Ghana goods, eat Ghana, drink Ghana, and wear Ghana. Mm. And we shall all have a better Ghana for ourselves. Mm. And we are about wrapping up, but before we go, what are your final words for us? Even though it's bad times, because this has never happened to us before, but let's all give thanks to God for our lives. Let's all show love and mercy for one another. Let us also, also forgive ourselves. This short time that we, this pandemic visited us, we have all seen that it's only the grace and mercies of God which is keeping us, all of us. And so why don't we show that and extend it to our brothers and sisters, our neighbors. So those of us who have little, let's share with others. I have started long ago, and that's Proverbs 11, 25 says, The general shall prosper, and he who waters shall be watered. Just before the announcement from the president, I bought some items worth about 30,000 Ghana cities, and uh, we have about 220 um, uh, widows in Accra. So we, we shared it among them, and those that we can transfer monies to, we did that. So all that I'm trying to say is that, even though it's bad times, let's continue to share love for each one. Um, and even though we are in our various homes, let us also keep closer to our Bibles. You know, this is the time to also mm -hmm. remind ourselves of the things that have been codified into the Holy Book. Let's remind ourselves to show more love to those at the prisons, those at the orphanages. I have adopted a countryside orphanage at Borjuasi for the past 12 years. And out of doing this, the Lord has blessed me a lot. You know, but at this time, let us also see the need to adhere to all the instructions and directives that have been given by the government to stay home and stay blessed, stay, stay um, what you call safe. Let's go by all the necessary uh, directives that have been given by the uh, health professionals so that we get um, our lives protected, stop the, uh, the spread, so that uh, we have the best for our country. And finally, a word to your members who are struggling during this time. What I want to say here is that never despair. Even though it's bad times, it's not for you alone. Even the metrics are falling. So whatever has happened, let's look at um, other things that we can think of to uh, put them on paper or, you know, record it somewhere. What are the, re, um, the uh, what do you call it, measures that we can take to redeem our lost uh, glory? Mm. It is not too late and we want to. When we have, any time we have good health and long life, we'll be able to rebuild. At a point, Jericho, Jerusalem were rebuilt. So... Let us not uh, be worried so much on what is, has befallen on us, but let's look at situations where we can bring ideas together to rebuild uh, our businesses and to rebuild our economy. The, we are in touch with the government and the other institutions that will have to support us. And then those who are also owing you know, like payments of loans and all that. Don't worry. Just think about your life. Just think about your health. And all those things, we will all bring ideas together to get to Business will come back. Thank you very much. Nana Dr. Apie J. Danka, also the first, is the president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry and our guest for today. We discussed how we can ensure continuity of businesses in the wake of COVID-19. We'll be right back.
your business concepts and investment must be harnessed through a hassle-free and highly thoughtful process to make them globally competitive. That is precisely the mission of the Ghana Free Zones Authority. Ghana Free Zones Authority packages Ghana's enabling business and investment environment with endless benefits. Total exemption from major taxes and levies for first 10 years. Talk to us now about our business oasis created all over the country. Acres of industrial enclaves for all sectors. Our beneficiaries are in vibrant business exporting finished and process factory inputs all over the world. And what do our clients call us? Partner. 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 Ghana Free Zones Authority. Sharing good fortunes. Breathtaking picturesque views. The essence of tranquility recrafted. What you desire? A romantic expedition, syndicate sessions, banquet and conferences, or a desperate weekend getaway? Just name it. It's exclusively packaged for you at Pedriasi Valley Resort. A break, spacious rooms, ultra modern gym facilities, games, indoors, terrace, and lawn restaurants and lounges, cozy private dining, and all the swimmers' paradise. Aquaba, any day, all year round, to Pedriasi Valley Resort. The acts of serenity, skillfully served. The government of Ghana has announced a 600 million CDs soft loan facility for micro, small and medium scale businesses. The president of Ghana, Nanado Dankwa Kufado, in his latest national address on government's COVID-19 pandemic measures, disclosed that the scheme will have a one-year moratorium and two-year repayment period. Persons who access these loans will have a one-year grace period before beginning repayment government, in collaboration with the National Board for Small-Scale Industries, business and trade associations, and selected commercial and rural banks, will roll out a soft loan scheme up to a total of 600 million CDs, which will have a one-year moratorium and two-year repayment period for micro, small, and medium-scale businesses. The government has projected that the COVID-19 pandemic will cost Ghana some $9.505 billion cumulatively. The finance minister, Honorable Kenufuriata, is expected to seek parliamentary approval for the government's 1 billion corona alleviation program announced by the president. I directed the minister for finance to send to parliament the coronavirus alleviation program, whose objective is to protect households and livelihoods, support micro, small, and medium-sized businesses, minimize job losses, and source additional funding for promotion of industries to shore up and expand industrial output for domestic consumption and exports. The program will be funded by the Ghana Stabilization Fund. The finance minister is also seeking the support of parliament to amend the relevant laws to lower the cap of the stabilization fund from $300 million to $100 million. This is to enable the government to use the excess fund to bridge the gap created by the economic impact of the pandemic. The Central Bank of Ghana has initiated its measures, including the reduction of interest rate as well as other measures to mitigate the economic impact of the pandemic. The Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, has entreated the general public to be careful about how they handle food items from the market in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the FDA, many are at risk of bringing the coronavirus home from affected persons who had contact with foodstuff they buy from the market. In an interview with International Trade Figures, the Chief Regulatory Officer Head, Food Enforcement Department of the Food and Drugs Authority, Mrs. Maria Abba Lovelace Johnson, cautioned the general public to wash food items such as tomatoes, garden egg, and other commodities outside before bringing them into their kitchens. She added that although the virus may not be visible on people and items, 
everyone is a potential carrier of the virus. When we have to get food, we go out. We have to ensure the food is rather not the carrier of coronavirus. How do we do that? When you buy the food, ensure you take it out of the package. So let's say you buy cornflakes. It has an inner package. You take the outer one off. Maybe you buy a carton of oats. You take the outer one and then you take the inner ones in. However, there may be people who will be buying just one. Let's say if it's just oats and you buy just one and all of them. That's what do you do. As soon as you get out, you have a tap there outside. Most of us have taps outside our homes. Just wash. You can take a tissue paper, disposable one. Just You can also put in some sanitizer, put it around it. Sanitize it either with soap and then the running water if it's doable for those that you can do you do that if it's just using sanitizer or some rubbing alcohol on it and all of that do whatever you can to ensure that you are not taking the coronavirus to your kitchen and then out there get your things washed the tomatoes the green pepper and those ones you can do very saturated salty water and wash them in it. The pepper. Get it saturated. Wash them because you cannot use soup. So here is the disinfection bit is the saltiness of the water. So we're not taking anything from the market straight into our homes, into our kitchen cabinets, into our freezers. No. And one thing we should bear in mind is the fact that there are a lot of people who may be asymptomatic. They may be not be showing the symptoms of coronavirus. So, well, I went to buy my garden eggs from this very healthy looking woman. She wasn't even coughing. She wasn't even sneezing and all that. So, what's my problem? She was healthy. And so, no, she may have it. Remember, it's a virus. Some may have it, but nothing could happen to them. Some will have and may even... So, you bear that in mind and know how we act. That everybody is a potential carrier. Mrs. Maria Abba Lovelace Johnson commended the president for the balanced interventions put in place for all classes of people in the society during this lockdown. Excellent decision by the president. And I also think that other people were taken into consideration, especially the food value chain. So normally what happens, uh, lockdown, people don't even get food. But knowing our situation, that we may have people who will not even be able to store food, then it is a good thing that at least they can go out if and only if they are going to buy food or going to do crucial things. I think it's a good decision and it was quite balanced very balanced to for the middle class you know we're even talking about food storage and yes food storage for even the other class of people who don't have deep freezers and fridges they can also buy their food and our system is such that it will even favor them we have the smoked herrings that are already preserved because of the smoking we have the kobe that's salted and dried so it's also preserved and can be um, kept for long anyone can do if you get eggs you can keep them for long and so you can do your eggs to you with a kobe without necessarily owning a fridge or a freezer in the wake of the lockdown mrs maria abat lovelis johnson encouraged all to ensure that food items are stored properly to prevent infection caused by microorganisms a lot of people bought food, as you said, and some may not even be consumed. So the storage is very important. First and foremost, we have maybe two major classes of people. Those who have fridges and deep freezers that can store food products and those who do not have freezers or fridges and we just have to put them there for as long as the food will be safe. So for the first class of people, that's the, those were the fridges and freezers. Products like fresh fish, 
meat, raw meat, but as raw poultry and all of that have to be kept frozen. Frozen, not in the fridge. It has to be kept in the deep freezer. And when they are being kept in the deep freezer, we have to ensure that they are nowhere close to the ready-to-eat ones. Like the prepared stew, soups, bread, cake, and all of that. Raw food and cooked food, as a matter of principle, have to be separated. See that you are demarcating your deep freezer, putting your raw foods at one side, and then the cooked food at the other side. All the raw ones beneath with the cooked ones on top that will ensure that there is no cross contamination the raw food products carry their own microorganisms meat products that are raw they can be likened to a corpse really the body of a human being a dead human being and the body of a dead goat or dead cow not much difference so with that in mind when you keep them you know that you don't have to put your bread next to it your bread is in a thin polythene bag and then the next thing you're doing is putting it next to the meat or the bread is sitting somewhere and then the meat is sitting on top of it or if it's being kept in the fridge, you see people packing stuff such that the ready-to-eat ones like the cooked stew, the soups, the bread and all of that are rather down there on some lower shelves. And you have the meat products and the, the raw meat on top. No. The cooking process itself or the heat treatment is to ensure that the microorganisms are eliminated or reduce to the barest minimum if we cannot eliminate all of them. Having done this, you do not get that food into contact, direct contact with the uncooked food. So we should get that clear, either demarcating one side for the raw food and getting another side for the cooked food. On the price hike of commodities, she implored the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and the Ministry of Trade and Industry to put in place some interventions to boost local production. Forces, market dynamics, demand and supply. There is a demand, so the supply may not be as much as that. There will be some shortage and of course, these are the things that come with such, thing, such issues. I mean, it's a crisis situation. And really, with the, there really is not, a, um, there can't be much, n let me put it this way, not much can be done. But then, I think the Ministry of Trade can put in some interventions if it's possible, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, maybe since I said it's about market forces, all that has to be done is more food more food has to come so that it's a dynamic it's market dynamics so really if there is more food so there is more supply and there is more demand so it goes on and on and on here are some basic protective measures against covid 19 popularly known as the coronavirus disease Are you an importer or exporter? Do you need quick financing at the best rate on the market? ADB has good news for you. 
Walk into any agricultural development bank location nationwide for that solution to all your trade financing needs. ADB offers you pre-financing of exports and imports, post-shipment credit facilities, bank guarantees, the issuance and acceptance of letters of credit, documentary bills for collection, outward documentary collection. Enjoy free advisory services from our well-trained, dedicated trade officers. Exporters of agricultural products are encouraged to take advantage of this great service. For further inquiries, call us on 0302-210-210. ADB, making trade finance easy. ADB, truly a Greek and more. And it's a wrap for this week's edition of International Trade Figures. Join us same time next week for some more. Before we go, we'd like to say special thanks to the sponsors of this program. International Trade Figures is brought to you by Ghana Free Zones Authority. They say sharing good fortunes, go, good energy, ADB, truly a great and more. International Trade Figures is also brought to you by Pediasset Valley Resort. My name is Anna Spio. Join us same time next week. <laughs>